which are in heaven. Lord, we gather ourselves together this morning. Lord, that we may go even deeper, Lord, into understanding the mechanism of sickness, recovery, prevention. Bless us now, Father, and quicken our mind, dear Lord, and let us learn all that we can so we can be better prepared for these final moments of life history. In Christ's name, amen. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at the mystery about the existence of parasites, the uninvited guests. In other words, you don't want to invite him because he's going to leave something that you don't want to be bothered with. Parasites is a serious problem around the world, and no country, uh, no one is exempt from it. Uh, It is a big problem because we have grown accustomed to parasites as if uh, they are just part of us because they are around us and we're coming in contact with them. And it's so many of them that we just grow accustomed of it. Uh, It is a serious worldwide health problem. It is found much more frequently outside of the United States. The worms that infest humans are usually of three types. You got the round worm, you got the tapeworm, and you got the flukes. Round worms and tapeworms are the most frequent. And these range in length from less than an inch up to 15 to 20 feet. That sounds like a dinosaur, you know, (laughs) instead of a parasite. Uh, The most common worm is the round worm. Uh, Families are pinworms, round worms, hookworms, whipworms, pinworms. They are mostly found in children. They can cause severe itching, and the aches can be transmitted to the mouth from the hand or when the hand become contaminated, either by scratching around the anus area or by coming in contact with pinworm eggs on contaminated bed clothing. It's very easy to become infected because, uh, you know, washing your hands, just simply washing your hands. Uh, a simple thing of just touching a doorknob where somebody didn't wash their hands. You can actually pick up parasites. And the more you study about parasites, the more paranoid you become because uh, it's so easy to get infected and it, you almost can't get around it. And, uh, and when, but when you see the problems that develop from it, it will probably be good to be a little paranoid. It really will. More than one member of the family may be contaminated. It is important that during treatment that all underclothes and bedclothes be changed and sterilized daily. Uh, So they can get in our clothes and reinfect us. It can get into someone's clothes that's close to you and reinfect you also by coming in contact with them. Whipworms, roundworms, Infection can be prevented by proper disposal of human waste. Hookworms disease is contracted by walking barefooted on contaminated soil. And this is something we do, you know, on a regular basis. We walk around with no shoes. And uh, a lot of times we we, uh, go in a house, uh, we go to church, and we take our shoes off. And because we feel that that's the proper thing to do. And I know in a lot of Asian countries, you almost have to take your shoes off. But it is not a safe process. If you take your shoes off, you should have some protection, socks or sandals or something. Because if a person have some type of fungal infection, uh, uh, some type of infection in the foot, If they're walking on the floor and you walk behind them, you can pick it up. And because we don't see it, because we don't can visualize it, it's not a big problem to us because it's kind of like if you 
If you saw a worm crawling on the floor, then you wouldn't step on it. But with parasites, you don't see them. And uh, they can transmit. Walking outside where the animals use their bathroom. And that's their little environment. That's where they go to toilet at. And you walk out there barefooted, you can pick them up. Uh, people love animals. I love animals. I have animals all around me. I probably got, I can look out my window and see 12 deer standing in my front yard. A whole flock of Canadian geese and all type of animals, you know, just, you know, um, wild turkeys. A whole flock of wild turkeys all around, you know. But they out there, you know, enjoying themselves and using the bathroom. And you walk out there barefooted. You you know, it's like you stepping in their toilet. You don't know it. And you can pick up some con contamination. So these things you must learn to cultivate, to be aware of, that is very easy. And you don't associate many of the problems we have with parasite infestation. Uh, prevention of this disease depends on proper sanitary disposal of human feces and wearing shoes. Tapeworm infestation is acquired by ingesting the eggs or larvae of uncooked meat. And some people like it, you know, eat semi-cooked food. And a lot of times the worms are there and the cooking process didn't kill them. To prevent infection with tapeworm, it's necessary that all beef, pork, fish be thoroughly cooked before eating. And so that is a ringworm right there on a person's body. And that worm is right up under the skin. And because it's not crawling around, you don't really think it is. You think it's a bruise or you think it's a birthmark or something like that. But it's actually a worm. And he's living off of you. That's what makes him a parasite. And so uh, he's sucking the nourishment out of you. You can have another one on your face and you're not aware that that's a worm. And he's living off of you. Many persons infected with worms have few, if any, symptoms. With heavy inf infection of worms, anemia and weakness may develop because they're sucking the nourishment out of you. And because there's not a lot of physical symptoms, sometimes we don't perceive that it's a problem. Another uh, infestation is candida. Candida is a yeast infection that develops in your body. It can get in your blood. It can get anywhere in your body. It's the same as thrust. Uh, with a brand new baby. It only can come when the immune system is so weak and then it will grow this yeast uh, and it can migrate anywhere. It can cause all kind of problem uh, from mental confusion to anemic condition to all type of muscle pain and just a lot of whole array of problems. It can even cause deafness of the ear because the yeast can <clears throat> get around your eardrum and build up around the eardrum and it can affect your hearing. Uh, it can get in your eyes and affect your vision, get in the vaginal tract and cause vaginitis, a uh, yeast infection from the vaginal tract. <clears throat> another one is herpes. Herpes is another viral parasite that can be transmitted. Uh, and there are different types of herpes. Herpes can also infect the eyes by touching the herpes somewhere else on your body and you don't wash your hands and you scratch your eyes, you can transmit it to your eyes. Uh, you can also go to your eye. And uh, can you imagine having a worm crawling in your eye? I mean... Uh, and it's always feel like something is in your eye and you can't get it out. And you think, well, I got a little something in my eye. You don't know it could be a worm. And they can live a long time feeding off of you. 
In Acts the 12th chapter, verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten up of worms and gave up the ghost. So these parasites have been around a long time. And there are biblical people that experience parasite infestation. And one easy parasite that is overlooked is a common house fly. This is one I hate. I hate flies. I do. I, I won't rest. I get him out of my house. I don't want nothing to do with him. I know what he I know what he will do. And he is a pest. And he know it. He know he's getting on your nerves. <laughs> Did you know? The larvae develop inside of the black fly and become infected, infected for human in about 10 to 12 days. They migrate to the biting part of the fly where they can be transmitted back to humans. When it bite again, the adult worm can live up to 15 years inside of the human body and their larvae have a lifespan of two years. Do flies have parasites? Researchers suspect that house flies can harbor up to 65 different illness that infect people. Some of the most common housefly diseases transmitted in the U.S. include a food poisoning, diarrhea. Uh, these pests may also transmit eggs of parasite worms, which cause their own issues. So they can bite a parasite worm and then transmit that worm into you. Okay, so if you see a um, a dead animal with maggots, it can, you know, feast on that. Then it can transmit the parasite right back to you. And you won't even know it. Can humans get worms from flies? The larvae develop inside of the black fly. I think I read that one. Let me go to this one here. And Job, the seventh chapter, verse five. My flesh is closed with worms, my clots of dust. My skin is broken and become loathsome. So Job had problem with parasite infestation. And like I say, it's an old problem that's been around a long time. Now, sisters don't like this. They don't like this clip at all. Put it on our skin. Let it let it wriggle. Those are worms. They are parasites living inside of a woman's breast. Bring it on our heart. Put it there, let it wriggle. And it's alive. A fly may seem that it's not intelligent, but it's a smart creature. It has figured out that it can go out and pot and have a good time, get pregnant, and don't really want to raise its offspring, so it simply transmits its larvae in you and let you be a surrogate mother to his to his little babies. And so <laughs> you end up raising the babies. And they can go on and party some more and have a good time. <laughs> and they will feed off of you and suck your nourishment and grow up inside of you. They got it figured out. We haven't figured out how to deal with flies. Of thousands of parasites known, over 130 uh, types affect humans. Seven may be found in the colon at one time. They can eat one's food, suck one's blood, leave excrement and intestines for blood reabsorption and toxic uh, ammonia and may affect one to six Americans. Microscopic protozoan harm more people than any other parasite uh, disease. 
The cysts are resting stage of this parasite is very resistant to temperature, dryness, and chemicals, which are found everywhere in our environment. People ingest the cysts, which they hatch in our bodies. Although we are commonly exposed to protozoans, our immune system usually keeps them under control. But people with weak immune system or toxic condition cannot fight off these parasites as easily. So if you're weak, your immune system is weak, they can really uh, take possession of your body. But if your immune system is strong, you can resist it. Parazon can be found in the intestines, the lungs, the muscles, the tissue, the digestion of tract, all through the body. They can produce disease such as Hodgkin's uh, disease, lymphoma, MS, ovarian cysts, psoriasis, ulcers on the stomachs and sores and skin diseases and so on that we would normally associate with parasites. Uh, but they are very much a part of many of our problems. Trichinosis, which is acquired by eating improperly cooked pork, frequently cause muscle spasms and diarrhea. Trichana is a parasite that is released from the swine and well it's the swine eat the rat the rat then infect the swine then human eat the swine and end up with the parasite and so because they don't die because you eat them they simply come inside of you the larvae live and then you excrete it and then if it's consumed again by human are a creature, it live in them until they can be expelled and end up living in some, another a host. From ancient time, it has been known that eating the meat of rats, swine, and even horses can produce a variety of disorders, which in some cases may prove fatal. About 27, uh, about 27 years ago, in ancient Israel, uh, 2,700 years ago, in ancient Israel, the prophet Isaiah wrote, those eat the flesh of pigs and rats and other abominable things, they will meet their end together. Swine contacts, contract the trichana parasites by eating the infected rat. Human take in the trichana larvae by eating infected pork. The stomach acids dissolve the larvae cysts, thus releasing the trichana larvae. The larvae mature into the intestines and transmit into the adults, measuring three to four millimeters in length. Each female lay approximately 1,500 eggs, about the size of a red blood cell, which then pass into the bloodstream. And so you can see that one female can produce 1,500 eggs, which can actually produce 1,500 parasites. So you can be totally inundated by these parasites. And let me, I'm going to pause. If you can just pause a minute, I'm going to reactivate these videos. So just give me a Second on your taping to pause this. Okay, we're about ready to get back started. And we, when we stopped, we was talking about uh, worm infestation in the human body and how it's transmitted there. sensitive to worms and insects and stuff and critters, maybe turn off now. Maybe turn off now. So what we have here is some medical footage of a surgery of some worms being, some parasitic worms being pulled out of a patient's intestines, colon, etc. So this patient obviously survived and the worms removed, no problems, everyone's happy, no worries, it's medical footage. So here we have here a surgery practice where a patient was complaining of intestinal bloating 
and uh, we'll soon find out why. So maybe you want to turn off now if you don't like the uh, medical footage. So we have here the... Here we go. Now that's not a... That's not spaghetti, that's considered worms. It could be a tapeworm, pinworm, fishworm, pigworm. Now people ask me, Harley, how do you get these in your body? Well, these are contracted from eating meat, fish, dairy, eggs, etc. Now it's medical fact, biological fact, that these worms must have meat or dairy or whey protein, etc. to eat. These worms cannot live on plant-based material. That's why you find them in the, the cats and dogs. And in today's uh, livestock, they get... So if you're a bit sensitive... So it's very easy for them to be transmitted. You know, we have animals. I was talking about animals we have, and we all love animals. But parasites love animals too. And so they are really lovable creatures, but they're not meant to live in the house with you and sleep in the bed with you and eat at the table with you. But you grow so used to them because you love them so much and uh, they're so obedient that you forget they're little creatures. <laughs> and so they end up eating out your plate, licking in your mouth and you, you know, that is not the way you're supposed to do it. But we all find ourselves so attached to them and we find ourselves doing that. They will lick on the other little dirty, nasty stuff and then they'll kiss and lick on you. And they don't know nothing about washing their hands or brushing their mouth. They don't know anything about that. You wouldn't think about letting a human do that, but you'll let an animal do it because they're so nice and you love them so much. So just be mindful as children touch their pets and animals. Those animals, they don't even think about being, you know, keeping themselves clean. And then the children touch and play with them. They go to their mouth. They transmit those parasites right back to themselves. So, I, And it's a very uh, touchy subject because people can really get upset with you and you start talking about their pets, you know. I mean, you, you have to be very careful because uh, they are human to them, but they're not. They're creatures. And uh, we love them. We take care of them. But be mindful, they do carry a lot of disease. Uh, children are frequently restless during the night with gritting of the teeth, a dry cough, and a slight fever. Occasionally, worms may be may cause convulsions. So when you see a child blowing split bubbles, gritting their teeth, scratching their backside, it's a good possibility they got worms. And so uh, you you know just be aware of that. Uh, the cause must be corrected, and this usually means correction of unhygienic living condition and proper cooking of all meat. It is easy to remove the worms from the body, but this does not necessarily cure the disease. Do not eat food robbed of its life-giving properties, such as white flour products, cane sugar products, vegetables cooked in lots of water, and the water is thrown away, peeled potatoes, candy, cakes, ice cream, and all kinds of goodies. To get rid of them, you also need to fast two to three days, eating pumpkin seeds, eating a lot of the pumpkin seeds, because the pumpkin seeds cut up the worms. Uh, you can eat as much as one pound a day. After doing this, three, uh, two to three days, drink water freely, especially drink plenty of fennel seed. Fennel seed can also kill certain types of parasites. Worms do not like this as it's sedative to them and they will pass from the body if the bowels are kept loose. Slipper am tea taken freely will remove worms from the body and is also good for the entire system. White oak bark tea used as an enema will remove some pinworms. Any of the fallen herbs 
are beneficial to those suffering from any kinds of worms. Wild yam, tansy, poplar bark, hyssop, wormwood, white oak bark, golden seal, black walnut, garlic, and many others. Uh, they can be used in a combination. Uh, they can be used as single herbs, but they are quite effective in destroying the parasite. Ellen White talked about parasites, and she warned us about them. I think it fell on deaf ear, but she did it anyway. There's a danger to health and the use of even sweet cider ordinarily produced. If people could see what the microscope revealed in regard to the cider they buy, few would be willing to drink it. Often, those who manufacture the cider for the market are not careful as to the condition of the fruit used, and the juice of worms and decayed apples is expressed. So now here's somebody going to make apple cider. They're not going to pick through those big bushel of apples and throw out the ones that are infected. They're not going to do that. If one apple is infected, possibly all of them are. You think they're going to throw that profit away? And they know that semi-fermented apples make the best cider. That gives that really nice flavor to it. So they're not going to throw it away because they know that people buy apple cider for that taste. And being slightly fermented, it really enriched that taste. So they're not going to cut off the worms and throw it away. That's what she's bringing out. Those who would not think of using poisonous, rotten apples in any other way would drink cider made from them and call it a luxury. But the microscope shows that even when fresh press from the press, the pleasant beverage is wholly unfit for use. That's not enough to discourage us, though. Mm -hmm. It could be basically the same thing, commercial apple juice. It depends on, you know, who producing it. It depends on, you know, if they want to lose a profit. Because you know how quick it takes apples and fruit to go bad. They're not going to throw it away. I mean, they're going to find something to do with it. And so if they can stretch it, you know, by putting a few in with some nice apples, they probably would do it. You would never know the difference. So anytime we buy a product made by man, we risk the fact that contamination could be involved. We, we have no clue. Any kind of juice or situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any type. And see what the, uh, the food inspector's standards are different than our standards. They know that a certain amount of infestation is there. They, they make guidelines for that. Yes. And the conclusion is we must make all the juice by all. Yeah, that's the only way you're going to know for sure what's in it. Because their standard is different. They, they know that, a, like in chocolate, they know that a certain amount of rest pieces is in chocolate. They can't take it out. So they said that up to a certain amount, it's okay. But it may not be okay to you up to a certain amount. Nicely prepared vegetables and fruit in their season will be beneficial if they are of the best quality, not showing the slightest sign of decay, but are sound and unaffected by any disease or decay. More die by eating decayed fruits and decayed vegetables which ferment in the stomach and results in blood poisons than we have any idea of. Now, what's that talking about? That's talking about your bananas that are turning dark. And we don't want to lose a profit, so we freeze them and make a smoothie out of them. <laughs> uh, we're doing the same thing that the commercial companies are doing. We don't want to waste our money, so we find a way to use it. When we are given direct counsel that when fruit and vegetables are going bad, 
We are not to consume it. Uh, and we know how quick this can happen. So just be mindful that these decaying vegetables can bring more sickness than you can imagine. And you don't associate it with the sickness because it's not something that happened right quick. Parasites can mimic many diseases such as allergies, anemia, back aches, blood sugar problems, diabetes, epilepsy, and other brain related problems. Uh, TMJ is one that is associated with parasites. Indigestion, liver pain, shingles, they all can be associated with the parasite. It also can inhibit any organ, including the brain. The tapeworm also can get into the eye and damage the eye. It can bring about depression, mental disorders, such as schizophrenia. Parasites can be contracted from uncooked meat, raw fruits and vegetables, impure water. Pets uh, are contracted with infected and, and can and, and infect persons or people. In Exodus, the 16th chapter, verse 20, notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it breeded worms and stinked, and Moses was rough with them. So even in the wilderness, they had a problem with parasites. Papaya has long been used in India to treat intestinal worms. Papaya fruit produce a latex, which is rich in papaya. The main enzyme, unripe papaya, has been used widely in medicine for many ailments, including intestinal worms. The latex from the unripe papaya fruit is rich in enzymes and is known to help purge intestinal worms. The seeds also contain elements that help expel intestinal worms. So papaya can be used really good. I mean the seeds, the unripe fruit uh, can kill these worms. So that may be something you might want to look at to do it on a regular basis, especially for the children. We talked a little about pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds has been recommended as an effective cure for intestinal worms by the University of Maryland Medical Center. Pumpkin seeds have a compound in them that can kill and destroy these worms. So um, we, we, we need to incorporate possibly some of these foods in our diet to be proactive against uh, some of these particular problems before they happen. Caraway seeds uh, is another effective remedy for intestinal parasites. Pomegranate bark on a pomegranate tree and the leaves and the stems of the tree can kill many parasites. We just simply boil the bark in water and we drink it as a tea. Neem is also in, known in India as one of the better remedies for dealing with parasites and worms infestation. Turmeric is an effective remedy for intestinal parasites and have antiseptic and antimicrobial effect, antiviral effect, and can help flush out the parasites out of the body. One that I'm really familiar with because uh, where I live, black walnut grows just one of the regular trees. It just grows all over the place. And uh, you know, it's amazing how that in different areas, God has caused things to grow. Now, where I live, pecan trees, walnut trees, hickory trees, chestnut trees, they're just regular trees. And they just grow all over the place. And then in other areas, you've got tropical fruits and other areas got berries and so on. But even though they are good for food, they can be used for medicine. Black walnut is one 
especially good for dealing with parasites. Worm wood, uh, worm, this is worm seed, but worm wood is another very good, powerful herb for killing parasites. Grapefruit seed extract is a very good uh, remedy. Now you can make your grape seed extract. You simply take the grape seed and you make an extract out of it. We're going to see how to do some of this this evening when we see how to make tinctures and then we're going to see how to make salves. We're going to do some laboratory work. Instead of just talking, we're going to see how to make some of these things, how to make essential oils, uh, salves, and different things. We're going to be limited, but yet we can still uh, show how to make a number of things. The word parasite in Greek uh, and it um, means literally one who eat with another. The guests at a feast. It was early applied to that class of guests who managed to flatter to live at the expense of other people. You may even know some parasites. Parasites are like mice. They eat the food that belong to somebody else. You know anybody like that? They always like to visit you so they can eat. <laughs> I I know when I was, you know, first got in the church, you know, I was single. I used to I'll make sure I would visit some of the sister's house so I could eat. <laughs> At least get a good meal at least once a week, you know. I was somewhat of a parasite. <laughs> so... Uh, Modern science has applied the word to vegetables, animals that attach themselves to other plants or other animals and live upon them as the human parasite live upon his host. These parasites are almost innumerable. Their microscope escapes, microscope is daily revealing new ones. There are three classes of them. The vegetable parasite that fasten upon plants and trees the animal parasite that feed upon vegetables, shrubs, and trees, and the animal parasite that attach themselves to other animals. Of the first class, the mistletoe and the oak is a familiar illustration. To the second belong all the variety of the tree borers and plant lice. To the third belong the fly that take possession of the caterpillar and all the blood-sucking insects that prey upon human, uh, upon man and beast. A few parasites may be useful. The vine which produced the vanilla bean is said to be a parasite. But the almost universal rule is that parasites are both useless and destructive. They attack plants and animals more vulnerable, more valuable than themselves. They feed upon the sap of the blood. They exalt the vitality of that upon which they fast in, in order to sustain their arm. And then they do no good in the world. They bear no fruit and they furnish no food. They are a pest in the garden, in the orchard, and in the house and everywhere. There's a mystery about the existence of these parasites. Why should the wise and good creator make insects to destroy our trees and vines and annoy us as the gnat and the mosquito do? I do not believe that there was parasites in Eden. I don't. I accept them as one of the results of the fall, one of the punishment of sin, one of the elements of trials and discipline in our probationary state. What can be more annoying? than the myriads of microscopic foe that can test more severely our vigilant. What can test more insidious our faith? I think we can learn an important lesson in regard to our growth in grace from these parasites. If we would be wise and strong spiritually, we must not root ourselves in the life of anyone else 
but in the truth and in God. The tendency of human nature is to be a parasite. And some of the most admirable people, this tendency is especially strong. They love and admire their minister or some popular Christian writer. They fasten themselves upon the man and upon the books for spiritual food. They take the truth at second hand. They believe it. They enjoy it. Not because God revealed it in the Bible, but because their favorite minister preached it. Or their favorite, favorite author teach it. Parasitism appeared early in the Christian church. Paul rebuked it sharply in the first epistle to the Corinthians. Every one of you said, I am a Paul and I am of Apollo and Cephas. This he declared is carnal. He tell them not to glory in men, for they are Christ. They are to live in him as, as the tree in the soil and not upon some other tree. Able and eloquent preachers attach the hearers to themselves. They need a great deal of wisdom and, and of grace to keep the congregation from parasitism. But wherever the life of a church but wherever the life of a church come to depend upon the life and the labor of any man, no matter how good, there is danger of both to the minister and the church. Whosoever come between human soul and his savior, whoever becomes such an agent of instruction and comfort to that soul that it does not want to receive divine truth from any other lip has blighted the tree of life of the soul and has turned its affection and hope from the creator to the creature. If he has done this consciously, if he has sought popularity, or uh, even affection for his own sake, fearful of his responsibility. A young pastor succeeded one who had been very popular. He sought out the members who did not come to church. Finding one of these in his home, it went out. I don't, I don't, I don't understand y'all electrical system anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, uh, a young pastor succeeded one who has been very popular. He sought out the members who did not come to church. Finding one of these in a home in the suburbs, he said unto her, Are you not a member of the Presbyterian Church? Well, she replied, I joined Mr. A last winter. But now he's gone, and I don't know who I belong to. Mr. A was no doubt a sincere and earnest. He meant to bring that woman to Christ, but he thought he had done so. But he had only drawn her to himself. She admired his preaching, so when, he, so when she joined the church, when he went away, she was like the mistletoe or the acorn torn from the oak. Christ was not her life, but it was the eloquent minister whom she loved to hear. The spirit of parasitism, insidious as it's destructive, we must study it as the microscopists study the scale bug. If we find that we are cherishing it ourselves, we are tempting others to cherish it. We must pray earnest for help. Parasites can take hold. Parasites cannot take hold unless the body is overlaid, encumbered with toxin, waste due to incor incorrect diet, diet and, and also slow metabolism and low blood pressure. Parasites cannot live in a healthy, sound tissue. We do not have maggots in our sink are in our garbage can because we keep them clean. A controversial spirit is encouraged. Many dwell almost exclusively upon doctrinal subjects. 
while the nature of the true piety, experimental godliness, received little attention. Jesus, Jesus, his love and grace, his self-denial, his self-sacrifice, his meekness, his forbearance are not thought before the people, not brought before the people as they should be. The error of existence everywhere have like parasites fastened as deadly poison upon the truth and in many minds have become identified with it. Many who accept the truth teach it in a harsh spirit. A false conception of it is given to the people and truth is made of none of no effect to those whose hearts are not softened and subdued by the Holy Spirit. The era of parasite on a tree of truth, Satan has wrought with deceiving power, bringing in multiplicity of error that obscured truth. Error could not stand alone and would soon become extinct if it did not fasten itself like parasite upon the tree of truth. Error draws its life from the truth of God. Tradition of men like Floating germs attach themselves to the truth of God. Men regard them as part of the truth. Their false doctrines, Satan gains, uh, through false doctrines, Satan gains a foothold and captivate the mind of men, causing them to hold theories that have no foundation of truth. Men boldly teach for doctrines the commandments of men, and as tradition pass on from age to age, they acquire power over the human mind. But its age does not make error truth. Neither does it burden weight cause the plant of truth to become parasites. The tree of truth bears own genuine fruit, showing its true origin and nature. The parasite of error also bears its own fruit, making and make manifest that its character is diverse from the plant of heavenly origin. And so that is the mystery of parasites, both physically and spiritually. We are coming in contact with it every day, and we need to be on God to fortify ourselves against the attack. And we have to work on our immune system because you're not gonna get away from it, but you can protect your body by simply cleansing it and strengthening your immune system.